Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Puppeteer full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In the last two episodes, we learnt about the introduction and we also learnt about the installation of Puppeteer in your local system. We also did a basic script to check whether our Puppeteer instance is working as expected. We were able to navigate to a web page and take a screenshot. That's the most basic check we can do. Today, we are going to do learn a little bit more and do kind of a basic web scrapping that's, uh, in, that's required or I would say that's one of the major use case of Puppeteer. We'll keep adding to this uh, as part of the complexity. I'll keep increasing as we progress in the series. But for today, we'll just learn how to do some basic web scrapping, use some basic methods like PDF or uh, you know screenshotting, etc. All right. So that being said, let's get started. This is part three of the series. If you haven't checked out the first two parts, I'll request you to kindly do so. You ha you'll have continuity in your learning and so that you can learn and master Puppeteer with me. This is the complete index of 25 episodes that I'll be covering. Today we are on episode number three. So today we'll write code to do basic web scrapping. Uh, what are we are going to do? Uh, we'll learn how to import library, launch a browser, do some basic web scrapping of extracting title, headings, generating PDF, generating screenshot, and finally closing the browser instance. All right. So that being said, let's get started with our hands-on coding. So this is the project we had, uh, we created last in the last episode. So I'm going to say episode 3.js. All right. So we'll start writing code now. But uh, first things first, we need to obviously in import the Puppeteer instance. Puppeteer is equal to. Always uh, try and use uh, auto completions as much as possible. That way, the possibility and the error um, chances of you getting into an error will be less. Right? Okay. So now, uh, as always, I'll start with writing a async. Okay. And you can write it in different ways. Uh, let's call it run. It's taking a return so let's say start okay that's also auto completing in a wrong way but never mind okay so I'm going to write a async function and say async function run okay this is my async function in this um, so what are we going to do we are first going to launch the uh, a new browser instance right so browser instance and how do we do that it's just simple we will import it browser is equal to now here is the trick you will always write await in front of all the puppeteer methods because you want it to wait till something is complete so you are going to say launch and here will we can pass uh, various options which I'll cover in the next episode or so but for now I'm making headless false that means I want to see the browser opening and seeing that way I'll be sure that my code is working correctly okay so now let's create a new page and here we are going to say browser dot you, you have a method called new page and we will close but like I say always the most of the errors is because we don't write await statements so all right so now I will say await page dot navigate right oh sorry page dot go to and then I'm going to say let's go to https google.com okay so I'm telling my browser instance that when it opens it should go to google.com and from there what I want is I want to extract the title that's there so I'm going to say await page dot now here is the trick there's a new method um, that you learn which is dot title what this will do is that it will get the title of that particular web page. If you want to debug more, we can just put a console log just so we can see the output. The next thing we'll do is um, we will see if there is any h1 tags and we will extract. Okay, so let's say instant heading equal to. So now here I'm going to write await page dot. Now this is a new method you will learn, which is evaluate. Right. So eval will evaluate in the page and check if there is any H1. Okay. And then what to do with it. 
okay so let's say if you get an element right and what do you want to do with it so we are going to say once we get the element then inside that element you extract the text content right that means whatever is the um, inside between that HTML h1 tag extract that value again let's do a console log just to be sure that we are getting the correct data once you get that the last thing we can do is page dot wait page dot screenshot so what we are doing is uh, we are just adding a screenshot and let's add a path and give a new and say path and I'm going to say episode 3 dot PNG save it with that pine that name okay uh, we can also do a page dot PDF so it will generate the PDF version of it and again we can pass the path and specify the file name now file names usually when you work it in a real-time um, environment or a real-time project you would dynamically want to generate those file names for now uh, for this tutorial sake um, just putting a PDF okay and you can also mention what type of format you want um, so I'm going to say a4 because I want it to be printed uh, that's about it in today let's get enough of this um, let's see how this looks so far and I'm going to close it okay so what are we doing here we are just launching a new browser instance we are adding a new page we are telling the page to go to google.com once you are at the page extract the title and console log it and here we are extracting any heading that we have h1 then screenshot that page and generate a PDF right this is the most basic example of web scrapping that you will learn or I would say you should try when you're learning puppeteer there are a lot of advanced use cases which I will cover as we progress in the series but for today if you are learning this is all you should know there are a lot of new methods you are learning which is eval title screenshot PDF right so these are all new which I have not covered in the previous episode so I'm sure that learning keep on adding okay now how do you run it you write node and followed by the file name which is episode hyphen 3 in this case dot JS okay now let's run it uh, nothing happens uh, let's see why because we did not initiate this async method so we are going to run it and say run okay now let's run it it's opening the chromium here now it opened the page it opened google.com now let's see if it created any data oh there is some error it says fail to find any element matching selector h1 so looks like when you open google.com there is no h1 there okay so instead I'm just going to create a paragraph and see if there is paragraph or if not I'll probably go with the link because that's the most simplest so see it says there is no matching um, thing so I'm going to change that URL okay and make it yahoo.com that way at least we can get some data I will teach you how to handle exception everything but today we are just writing a basic script to make it work so now they should go to yahoo.com and see if there is any h1 tag and it says episode 3 is undefined oh because I did not put it in single quotes I'm sorry um, I don't do editing work I do live coding and that's where uh, I also run into issues just like you and that's where we learn so it opened the page now it's trying to find the, let's see what it is doing alright so it has printed the title for us you see here it extracted the title it extracted the heading and it generated the screenshot of Yahoo and it generated a PDF also alright so that's what this particular script was supposed to do and that's what it has achieved so what we learned in this episode is basic web scrapping of when you go to a URL or a web page you want to extract the title heading um, etc so you can do all of that right here okay and create a PDF out of it right? now you can add in the next episodes as we progress I'll show you how to write them to a file 
how to handle exceptions, how to handle different various fail scenarios. I hope it's clear. I hope now you're confident in getting started with some complex um, use cases as well. But these are the basic things that you should know, you should try before learning anything else in Puppeteer. I hope uh, the tutorial is clear. I hope you're confident now. Join me in the next episode. We will learn about Puppeteer options. You see here that I have given some options like headless, false, etc. You will need to customize them as we go along and you try to deploy to higher environments. You will need these options in place. So we will learn all about it in the next episode. Thank you so much for joining in this episode. I hope you are learning. I hope you are enjoying. If you like the video, please do hit that like button. Please do share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.